<laughs> I'm Louise. I'm not funny. I'm a poet. Uh, hilarious. I might be hilarious. No, I'm a poet. But don't let that put you off because I do know this is a comedy competition and I am used to being laughed at. Oh, I like the R. Thank you. This is my poetry book. And I use it as an accessory to try and convince people that actually I'm the poetically artistic sensitive type with an eccentric and interesting taste in fashion mm -hmm. rather than just a weird neurotic freak with no dress sense. <laughs> I'd like to do my poem. It's called Animal Rights. Animal Rights. It doesn't rhyme. But don't let that put you off, because I have been assured they don't always have to. <laughs> Animal rights. Oh, it's not political, by the way. That's just the title that they gave us in the poetry workshop. <laughs> Animal rights. I love animals, me. Bacon. Sausage. Black pudding. Pie. You name it, I love it. My friends always say it's because I'm on the same level when it comes to intelligentness, especially once it's dead. But there is going too far. I mean, what's all this vegetarianitism about? I mean, it's not what you call normal, is it? Just eating lentils and nuts and stuff. You may as well be a squirrel, except I don't think even squirrels eat lentils. And what are they all about then? Lentils! And what about all those animal light reactors that go on all those marches? Well, me, I agree with them actually. I don't think we should put animals, this is a bit political actually, I lied. I don't think we should put animals in cages and experiment on either. I don't want to take some pill that's been mixed with washing up liquid and fed to a little white mouse to see if it cures his squeaking. No. I have more respect for animals than that. They have far more use living in a field of green before travelling to the freezer, trotting their way to my plate and finding their final resting place in my belly. Thank you. Oh, thank you. That poem isn't actually based on any truth. I am, in fact, a vegan. <laughs> But I always find that it's so much easier to get away with telling lies on stage than it is in real life. Oh, do you know about that, don't you? <laughs> Unless, of course, you're my mother, an ex-husband, or a former work colleague whose boyfriend you once, once, accidentally, inadvertently flirted with. I say once, I say accidentally, inadvertently, I say flirted. None of that's actually true either, well it was a lot more than once. It's just me trying to be light-hearted, which is actually a bit of a joke because I am a pathologically depressed pessimist with no self-esteem and an ever-present death wish. And. I have heard that you can die on stage, which is why I've decided to try out this comedy in inverted commas. Only slightly less embarrassing for me than my inverted nipples. I say less. Anyway, I'm digressing, which is a big improvement on six months ago when every time I got on a stage, I'd regress. Again, embarrassing. I'd like to finish with a short autobiography about my sad existence as a character actor desperate for love and approval. Well, just even a bit of lukewarm attention. <laughs> See me, I can't write anything funny or humorous or comedy shaped or exploring life's highs unless I'm hiding behind makeup and costume and gender disguise. Why is that, do you think? Is it the stubborn, depressed pessimist in me who finds smiling an emotional strain and laughing a paid and a plore, a plain time-consuming energy, a waste of space chore? Or is it that I need to become someone else to allow humour to show its face, find a place upon my face? As Kimmy Suan, Queen of the Street, spoken word, 
I has plenty of chat. I as wicked and sharp and witty and fat. I can talk funny stuff about hoodies, Mackey D's and babies and all that. And in it that I can get plenty of laughs talking about boys with no class, but I never feel of my champ with us. <laughs> or my depressed alter ego, who is Nicola Goff. I may spend my life looking completely pissed off, but even I raise a smile with my commitment to goth, as I bring joy to the world for the best part of a week, melodiously singing my song, Dark and Bleak, which goes something like this, please try not to freak. If you know it, sing along, let's bring some joy to the proceedings, this is a comedy show. Bleak, 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 dark, 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 bleak, 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 it really, really hasn't been my week. <sighs> Even do it from up north can muster a titter with me view of women, a world which is twisted and bitter, a recycling comedian with no jokes to speak of, it's funny to watch the desperation I reek of, but me, that's a different matter entirely. All I can write and perform smacks of sadness and madness, a pit void of even a fragment of gladness, destined to send audiences home with a lead weight in their stomachs and a chip on their shoulders <laughs> as the taste of depression singes and smoulders. That's entertainment. <laughs> Not, I'm sure you'll agree. So why can't I just be funny as me? Ditch Kimmy and Nicola and Dirk and the rest. Bite the bullet, stand up straight, grip my teeth, bare my breast. Open parentheses. Not literally, obviously, because that would give away the secret dependencies I have on my exhibitionist tendencies. Close parentheses. And indulge in a bloodbath of comedy fest. Throw off my pessimist chains, unlock my handcuffed funny bones, put them in gear with my light-hearted brains as I embrace optimism, happiness, and finally break free. Oh, why, why, oh why can't I be funny as me? I am in the right place, aren't I? <laughs> Thank you, I've been Louise Stokes. I, I haven't quite finished yet. <laughs> Unfortunately, even after I leave the stage, and the day after that, and the day after that, I still will be Louise Stokes. Good night. Yeah.